So, uh, you've seen other clips. We've gone through the different features of the Geek's Toy, uh, how it sort of works. You'll have seen the last clip, which was setting up a profile um, for trading. What you can see in front now is that profile. That's a pre race trading profile that we went through. Um, so, we've got all the tools at our disposal, um, and it's a case of now working out what we're going to do with them to make a few quid. So, in this one there, I'm just going to try and take you through what it should be like placing your first trade. So we've set up a profile, this is a pre-race trading, we've got 5 minutes on the market overview here, a few different runners on display, you can see the market activity starting to pick up now. Uh, now there's a couple of different parts to sort of pre-race trading, or any trading I suppose if you like. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more after after this race about it, but uh, I'd actually say reading the market is probably only sort of half of it, um, and, and that's the bit we're going to look at now. So you can see I've not got any live feeds up at the moment at all, um, probably because I haven't placed a bet. I'll, I'll pull that from my other screen because obviously not going to have space right over here. So you may, you may hear the video at some point or other, uh, commentators at the start. But what I'm looking at now is what's you know all the information that's on offer to me. So look at the market overview. You can see that the prices are sort of jostling about and trying to find their true price. They're reacting to each other a little bit as well. We've got the Betfair graphs down here. You can see looking at this one. Uh, it's obviously the favourite, it's probably took the most money, uh, well, it hasn't quite taken the most money, interestingly, but uh, it's, it's, you know, there's been a steady rate of uh, fill there on that, on the graph. Fairly steady. Uh, second favourite, started to drift ever so slightly. Again, not a bad fill rate, 23k match on that runner. And then the third's gone out a little bit. So, at the moment, this is probably not one of those situations where it's extremely clear uh, what we're going to do, but to place a back trade, we know we click on the back side of the book, like that. So that would be a £100 trade on the back side there. So what I want to do, because I want to, I don't want to give any value away, I'm not going to take the price at 6.4, I'm going to offer one at 6.6. .6. Now there's big money here on the lay side, but I'm going to ignore that. I think that possibly this is due to come in a couple of ticks. So on the other hand, it's probably not a bad uh, bad option to have a lay stake on the, on the other side of the book for an exit when it comes but obviously we want to make sure that that exit doesn't get hit for our entry now 6.6 .6 is looking unlikely so I'm going to offer them 6.4 hopefully that will get taken now I'm doing this on the basis there's not a lot going on in the market there we go and it's taken and now we'll probably get our 6.6 .6 as well by the looks of it uh, I'm going to move my first exit to 6.2 and that was rather lucky that spiked down like that uh, and very aware of the fact that I'm just talking here so I've placed 200 pound stakes through there one was matched 6.6, one was matched at 6.4 and I've laid them both off at 6.2 so that's £9.68 across the book if we get that hedge figure out there and it happened very quick but I'm just basing this whole view on this race it's going to be a sturdy race, a steady race there's not going to be a huge amount of movement looking at the graphs there's, you know, there's not a massive opinion that the prices are massively wrong I'm not going to get that hedge, I hedge up 6 ticks there um, so that's £9.10 but uh, basically I'm just taking the opinion I'm going to sit on the extremities uh, up above the price I'll put another stake in there we've probably got just about enough time maybe for another trade um, Got me a live video up. There we go. So that was filled at six eight. So while that loads up, have to scratch that at six eight by the looks of it. Um, just lost my train of thought a little bit there. Basically, I'm, I was yeah, I was looking at just sitting outside the prices as they bounce up and down. Um, in a market, it's going to be fairly sturdy. We can get a nice fill price, like I say, we offer a price rather than taking a price, and we've already got ourselves a tick profit if it just stays where it is. Um, so you can see on the the live video now actually that they're right at the start and the race is due to go off. So I won't place any more trades, um, but. It was just based on the fact that there's not really a lot going on there. The prices ain't moving about a huge amount. So you, what you need to do when placing a first trade, I'll just mute that now so because the race is going to go off. Um, when placing a first trade, what you need to do is not get too ambitious, too excited. You need to think about what you're going to do because a whole market, there's a huge amount of money matched. Three hundred thousand pounds been matched there. You, you're not ever going to get away with having the perfect entry and the perfect exit, or very rarely are you going to get away with that. Um, we don't, quite frankly, we don't need to do that. You can see out of that £350,000 match, I only placed £200. Uh, it took a couple of ticks, bagged a tenner. 
Uh, now tenors going to add up over the day, sort of 30 races, 40 races. Before you know it, you're onto a consistent, nice amount of money. Um, and, and obviously as time progresses you can up that but for a first trade what you want to do is sort of sit outside the prices be very selective um, be patient because if you don't don't get filled then you haven't actually lost anything I know that it's quite common for people to feel like they've really missed out or lost out on something if uh, if they don't actually get their bets matched but you know if your bets didn't get a match that's probably a good thing you, you've made a good call you haven't offered an unvaluable price and you've taken a little bit of value out of the market that's obviously going into your bank account essentially now. So before I started the clip the other thing I was going to talk about was there's actually a couple of parts to that trade in. So there's a part of understanding the markets, understanding the graphs, the ladders, what's going on and how the prices prices are behaving, where they're likely to go, where the where you know where we can find ourselves a position we're more likely to profit than we are to lose. However, um the other big part of that which is often overlooked and if you've read uh, my blog you'll, you'll see that I've harped on about it at points in the past is actually ourselves um, now and, th and that sort of ties into what I'm saying about sitting outside the prices there as well especially in first trade especially if you're a new trader um, you need to just sort of sit back and actually think about how you're feeling how you're behaving how you you know how you're reacting to different things because it's quite possible to actually call something quite well and make a mess of it um, and and to be honest that is often the number one biggest problem um, so you, you'll have seen people even experienced people do it as well everybody has off days whatever the reason may be um, but you need to be fully aware of yourself. So when you're sitting down for your first trade like this and, you, and you're going to try and attempt to do something like what I've just done there, uh, probably on smaller stakes, I'd advise if you're just starting, um, you need to sit and actually think, you know, how am I feeling? I'm not getting too carried away because that's often when the mistakes sort of happen when you get a bit carried away, a bit ambitious or, or a little bit upset. Um, and that sort of ch chase mentality of gambling develops because essentially we are still gambling here. We're just gambling on the price moving rather than the definitive outcome. So, when you're placing your first trade, hopefully you'll you'll manage to sit and apply like that. Because, like I said, I didn't place very many trades at all there. It's a case of one very small move out of a whole big picture, take a little chunk, um, and that's all we need. And, that, and that's all you should be aiming for as your, as your first trade, really, as well. Your first first couple of months, I'd say, first three months, that's all you should ever really be aiming for is a small little bit like that. 